The Forward Thinker Show is available on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Hey, it's Coral, and welcome to The Forward Thinker Show, the podcast where we share the stories and expertise of global leaders in business and technology. Today, we're joined by Gabriel Quitos, uh, president of SHIP FIU and also a tech consultant and an ex-Ivy League student. So tune in, and we're going to have some fun today. Okay, Gabriel, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank You're you for good. having me today. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. I, I do want to start. Like, where where are you from? Where'd you grow up? So I was born and raised here in Miami, mm-hmm. and but my parents are Peruvian, mm-hmm. and they came, they immigrated when in like their 20s. Mm-hmm. So maybe around the 90s is when they came over. Are you an engineer, right? Like, what's your major now? Yeah, so technically my major is called interdisciplinary engineering. Mm. And all that is is basically what I'm learning in that curriculum is to be a good engineer, you need to know more than just engineering. You need mm. to know some business. You mm-hmm. need to know how to communicate mm-hmm. some ethics involved. Oh, so it's okay. a more well-rounded, a well-rounded. approach to oh, engineering. Okay. So how did you get into that? So... I didn't know I wanted to do interdisciplinary. I hadn't even heard of it. Mm -hmm. It was when I was up at UPenn, that's Mm -hmm. where the University of Pennsylvania, I was there studying mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. I was there for two and a half years and I realized that I didn't really want to be an engineer Mm -hmm. when I graduated. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff that I was learning was super heavy on the technical stuff. And I wanted more technical and like hard and soft skills. I was just learning hard skills. Mm -hmm. So then, and I also knew that I wanted to come back home because just like the community at Penn was not what I was used to mm-hmm. being at home. So I was like, okay, let me find a major that I want that's closer to home, which is where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And then I come across the interdisciplinary major where it's like, oh, you can design and customize your own major. And I was like, really? Okay. Really? Yeah, like I get to pick my own concentration. Mm-hmm. And when I looked at the curriculum, there was a lot of, there's a class called human centered design. Mm-hmm. There's a class called engineering professional development. So I like this. That's exactly what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think I was going to find it. But yeah, I found it where I wanted mm-hmm. it to be. And it's been great ever since. So how is it like going to an Ivy League like that? So I think in some ways I felt like okay, I found my people. And in other ways, I was like, I'm, I'm like an iso- isolated person there. An isolated person. Yeah, because growing up, I like I was like top of my class graduating. Mm-hmm. I felt like I could pick things up quick. I was a really fast learner. And when mm-hmm. I went to, F- to UPenn, mm-hmm. that's when I learned that like, oh, I'm among the best students. Mm-hmm. I'm not like one of the smartest. I'm like an average student here. Yeah. And it was great being surrounded by all those, like, driven people, super smart people, like, way above average. And I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Like, these people have that same drive that I do, the same priorities that I do. But then that was on the surface level. Mm -hmm. But then when I really got to know them, I realized that maybe our priorities weren't the same. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, like, I had a strong focus on family, Mm -hmm. on like having that community. Yes. Whereas opposed to the community in Penn, it's a lot more like individualistic. Yeah. Yeah. And also a lot of people are from either the Northeast or from the West Coast. I was one of the few people from even Florida. Wow. Yeah. Was it like competitive in in nature? Was it competitive? Because I've heard of like, it's even competitive to get into the clubs that are inside the schools. Is that like a, a... correct thing or yeah i would say it also depends a lot on the major so Mm -hmm. there's different colleges at penn Mm -hmm. so there's a college of engineering Mm -hmm. and then for example there's warden Mm -hmm. the college of business i think it's like the top in the country yeah so warden especially is very cutthroat like it's Mm. known for like i don't even want to help you on your homework because there's curves in the class and if i help you that'll affect the curve oh my god yeah that's crazy luckily in engineering the professors which is something that i liked Mm -hmm. they were they said like look you can collaborate as long as you put who you worked with on the paper Mm -hmm. like you're good so i did like that it was very collaborative in the classes Mm -hmm. but regarding personal lives it was Mm -hmm. a lot more individualistic in that sense yeah so can you can you can you like paint the picture of the day you decided hey I, I need to go back home i i need i need to get away from this competitive individualistic environment that you were in at the time yeah i would say i'll start off with like the first moment that i felt like i didn't fit in mm-hmm. it was probably like one the first week of school and 
I had made some friends. We were having lunch, and the conversation that they were having over lunch was about like the different places in Europe. Mm-hmm. And I've never been to Europe, so they were like, <laughs> "Oh, like, yeah, I really like Paris." And then one of them was like, "Yeah, but like Paris is better for you know shopping scene. If you want good food, then you should go to Italy." And I'm like. <laughs> What? Like, what? the only time I've ever been outside the country was mm. to visit family in Peru. I've never been across the Atlantic. Mm. So and that's why I was like, oh, like, these, like, I kind of don't belong here in that sense. Like, mm. these people are different from me. But I still tried to make it work. And I think what the moment that I felt like I needed to leave Penn, it was after COVID. So when mm. COVID happened, I was doing my work remotely, my homework remotely. Mm-hmm. So I was getting an Ivy League education while being here in Miami. And for me, that was like a dream come true. Yeah. And then in the fall of, when was it, 2021, mm-hmm. I decided to go back because, you know, they were like, okay, we're going to have in person now. And when I went back, I realized after being in Miami for almost a, over a year mm-hmm. after COVID that, like, the people that I knew Mm-hmm. in Miami compared mm-hmm. to the people that I had met at Penn like they were good people mm-hmm. and I met a lot of like great people but at the end of the day mm-hmm. they those relationships didn't matter as much to me mm-hmm. as the ones that I had back home wow. and I felt like I was like why would I be spending time with people that for me mm-hmm. as much as they matter they didn't matter as much to me as my family my friends that had grown up my whole life mm-hmm. and and I felt like I had also had the chance to be involved a little in Miami, like the community-wise. Mm-hmm. And when I went back to Penn, I was like, I'm, I feel disconnected to my community. Yeah. I c- feel like I I can't go back and give back to my community mm-hmm. while being at Penn. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a funny thing here. Like here in Miami, it's like no matter where you go, everyone is somehow always connected. Yes, Miami like, really is small. It's like, super small. Like I, I like at first, when I first came here, I thought like, oh, nobody knows each other. But then like I started to know more people and they're like, oh, you know this person that also knows this person, that crazy. also knows this person, that also knows this person. So it's like you get to really, you really, you really feel together. And it's also like... Um, I don't know, did you did your family emigrate here to the US like a while ago? Were you like a first gen or so first gen in the in the sense that I was the first one born here. Mm. I do have an older sister and she was also born here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they, they moved here in the in the nineties mm-hmm. and it's kinda complicated. I think like they met in mm. Peru but they got together here yeah, when they yeah. both realized like, Oh, you're also here. Crazy. Yeah. And so they got together here, got married here. My sister was born here. I was born here. And it was my, even though my parents, Mm -hmm. honestly, they both graduated from FIU. They're both FIU alumni. Oh, wow. Yeah. They had both uh, been to college in Peru. They didn't finish and Mm -hmm. ended up finishing it here in Miami. Yeah, that's that's good. It's like you you get your your family support because here in Miami it's like different from Florida. Like we w- there's this thing of like if you're from Florida, if if someone tells you oh you're from Florida, no, no. I'm from Miami. Yeah, it's it's its, <laughs> it's, it's different. own it's whole it's its own thing. It's, it's a really nice uh, community for people who are like first gen or in from a Hispanic background. So when you got here to FIU, you did you decide? right away like oh i want to be a leader a president it was that something you wanted to do right away or like how did that how did that happen so i knew that like if i'm being honest realistically the level of education that mm-hmm. i was going to get at fiu is not going to be the same mm-hmm. at penn mm-hmm. but i told myself if the reason that i'm leaving penn which mm-hmm. is something you're not like if you get into an ivy league you're not supposed to leave that's the that's the culture there right that's the culture like and mm-hmm. even like, so many people told me, like, yo, just stick it through. Like, you're almost there. But I was like, no, like, I'm not happy here. I'm going to mm-hmm. leave. So I knew that if I'm going to make this decision, this, like, unorthodox decision, I have to make the most of it. Mm-hmm. So I told myself, I'm leaving Penn because I want to give back to my community in Miami mm-hmm. and because I want to pursue a career in product management, ultimately. Mm. And that means working on myself technically and professionally. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what I wanted to do at FIU. I just knew that with my, I'm going to have more free time now Mm -hmm. because FIU classes are going to be slightly easier. Mm -hmm. With that free time, I can't just spend it sitting around and also don't want to spend it Mm -hmm. like 
working maybe like retail to get an extra little bit of cash like i want to do something that helps me towards my future and Mm -hmm. that goal of giving back to the local community so i started just getting involved in extracurriculars because that's Mm -hmm. all i knew and that's when i became a member of shep Mm -hmm. and that was the first time throughout my college that i was like okay this is my people Mm -hmm. because it was people that were smart that were driven Mm -hmm. that were interested in engineering which i found at penn the only difference is that they were also hispanic and they understood me Mm -hmm. and my socioeconomic background as well which Mm -hmm. i didn't have at penn so it was Mm -hmm. that missing puzzle piece that i found at show so at penn it was it would like make my week whenever Mm -hmm. i found someone that would speak Spanish and was in engineering. I was mm-hmm. like, no way, like you're here too? Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. You know, or sometimes a highlight of my day would just be like when I'm walking to class and a car would pass by playing Hispanic music, mm-hmm. like windows down all wow. the way up. And I would, that would just make my day just because here I'm so used to hearing Spanish. Like, you go to a doctor's office, mm-hmm. dentist's office, and they're like, you go to Hola, Publix. Yeah. yeah. It's, they assume <laughs> you speak Spanish. Yeah. And I guess I wasn't used to that culture shock when I went up there where. Like, my exposure to Spanish just dropped to barely anything. Mm -hmm. So then whenever I would get that, like, small sliver in the day of, like, Spanish here, Spanish there, Mm -hmm. even if it was, like, through music, Mm -hmm. then that would be the highlight of my day. Mm -hmm. And then here at FIU, um, it's just so nice. The first time that, like, I had a conversation in Spanish, it was I had joined the intramural soccer team for Shep. And, and like, personally, I love playing soccer. Like, I Mm -hmm. grew up playing soccer. And... Honestly, I just felt so Hispanic in the moment. Like, oh, like I'm playing soccer, speaking Spanish. Yeah. Like, this is this is this, what I like. This you is know? what you like. Yeah, I yeah. felt like I was way just in that moment. I felt more in touch with my roots and my culture than I ever did at Penn. Mm. Were Were you also able to, um, like? Did it also help you like to be a better engineer? Because I know you want to get into project management, but there's also like a benefit to knowing about engineering before you get into project management. Did did that help you having that community there? I would say for sure. Mm-hmm. With something that I knew long term mm-hmm. was that I wanted to work in South Florida, especially in Miami. Mm-hmm. Like even when I went to Penn, I was like, if when I graduate, mm-hmm. I'm gonna come back down to Miami. Mm-hmm. And most of the jobs are filled through networking. I think it's like some crazy statistic where mm-hmm. 80, 85 percent of jobs mm-hmm. that never get posted because they're filled through networking or they do get posted but really like there's so already, already applicants. they have a thing in the bottom right yeah. and all my networks up at penn were either again in the northeast or in the west coast mm-hmm. none of my networks were in miami which is where i wanted to so i was like how was how's this aligning with my goal mm-hmm. and being at fiu i've been able to network with students mm-hmm. who are going into work in south florida Mm. i've been to different networking events for product managers Mm. in south florida in miami and in that sense it's really helped me a lot more it's helped me progress a lot more towards Mm -hmm. my goal of being a product manager in miami Mm -hmm. than penn did even though maybe penn gave me a better technical Mm -hmm. education Mm -hmm. i've been able to grow my network where i want it to Mm -hmm. grow a lot more here in fa what do you think is the benefit of being you know having that your cultural background how would that help you become a better project manager let's say if joey from iowa wants to build a startup and he wants to have a really good project manager what would be the benefit of having someone with a cultural background as a project manager yeah for sure that's a good question so one thing that was i guess i knew to some extent Mm -hmm. but i really came to realize and internalize was how different the cultures are like hispanic wise Mm -hmm. or just a community in miami Mm -hmm. compared to the rest of the united states like Mm -hmm. we're a little microcosm here Mm -hmm. and regarding my cultural background i learned that i have an easier time relating to people Mm -hmm. because i was exposed to different cultures like yes we're all hispanic but each country has their own culture and i was Mm -hmm. exposed to a bunch of different cultures and we're not just hispanics here like we also have like from from Haiti, mm-hmm. from Brazil. Yeah, exactly. We have, I've even met people who are from Russia really? who are here. Yeah. So I would say we're just such a diverse city mm-hmm. that growing up here, you get exposed to all these different cultures, all these different 
ways of thinking and perspectives mm-hmm. so that when you approach me with a problem, mm-hmm. instead of automatically thinking, what do I like or what do I think is a good solution? Mm-hmm. I start thinking, okay, yeah, maybe I think this is a good solution, but what do other <coughs> populations think? Oh, it's actually so interesting you say that because I, I was working on a project with my brother where we were making a website for a concert in um, Paraguay. And we built the website, and it had all these different facet, facets on it. But then my brother went to Paraguay and tested out the app, and it was slow. And you know why it was slow? Because in Paraguay, they don't have as much internet access. So we had to boot, like, make the, make the take down a lot of the elements of the app so that it could run faster because there was, like, 5,000 people using the application. Wow. And so if he wasn't there and interacting with the with the customers if you don't know if you're not if you don't have someone who is from that culture then you're not going to be able to build a good product and you yeah. know you just said that you know like having different perspectives of different people will help you build better products and that's why you should get somebody from Miami exactly. yeah cuz i think like isn't hispanic cultures we're community based cultures yeah. like how can we relate to each other but in america it's it's a little bit different cuz it's a more how can i benefit from you it's yeah. an individualistic culture exactly. like let's very help transactional. Me, yeah very transactional like let's let me help me like i can do this or and like it it's it's kind of funny cuz you're born into this world and for the first 5 years of your life you're not alone. Like you yeah. did not have control over what you ha- what you have to do. You had help from your mom, your family. So what makes you think that if you're gonna be successful, you're gonna do it alone? It right. makes no sense. Exactly. Yeah. You're only there because of your family and your community. Your and your community. I feel like people think that having community or connecting with other people, it's like oh, you're, I were opposed to each other. But in in fact, it's more like no, we can help each other. There's yeah. no need to compete. I yeah. think that that's something also like engi- people in engineering have to learn that like there's no need to compete. There's enough opportunities for everyone. And there's no, like when you're like abundant, you don't feel like, oh, they're taking my spot. Exactly. Yeah. There's this there's this idea or like this philosophy where mm-hmm. like one plus one equals three. Where it's the, the, <laughs> like the sum. <laughs> where it's like, let's say I bring something to the table mm-hmm. and you bring something to the table. And if you add it like separately, mm-hmm. like one and then one, that's two. Mm-hmm. But if we combine and combine our ideas, combine our perspectives, mm-hmm. then we can get to something mm-hmm. that's even better than our individual ideas. So that's yeah. why one plus one equals three. If we combine our perspective, our ideas, we can achieve something better than we could have on our own. That, yeah, and it's like, if you're going to build a global product, <laughs> why shouldn't your employees also be global? Yeah. Like you need a global perspective you need for a global... Glo- yeah. yeah. Do I say that again? Yeah, you need a global perspective for a global product. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know what it is, but like, you can't have bias in products if all your engineers are the same. Yeah, and it, that goes like, even yeah. if you just have... Hispanic employees. Yeah. Like, who's to say your your product is gonna be a hit in Europe if mm-hmm. you don't know any? If none of your employees know about Europe. Mm. If you don't have maybe one of those UPenn kids could tell, like you know, in Paris we <laughs> yeah, have the literally. shopping scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when that's when they're useful. That's when they can add to the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you have for like a Hispanic engineer who wants to get involved in their community but they don't know how? I would say. The biggest thing, I guess the biggest room for improvement that I've seen for Hispanic students Mm -hmm. and that I saw a lot at Penn, because what I try and do is, okay, what are they doing at Penn that we're not doing? What are they doing at these Ivy Leagues that we're not doing? Mm -hmm. And how can can we incorporate that into our our daily habits or our approaches to things? Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing is focusing on professional networking. Mm -hmm. And I found out about, like, community events through LinkedIn. I Mm -hmm. would say... The emphasis on LinkedIn up at the Ivy Leagues is a lot more than here Mm -hmm. in Miami. Mm -hmm. And I think if people really dedicated more time to going, like... Having a personal brand. Yeah, having a personal brand, exactly. A a personal brand is really important, especially, like, and I feel like if we have all of the Miami engineers really build their personal brand, they can have such an impact. And, like, a personal brand is not just for, like, oh, I'm going to do this to get a job. No, like you can use it if you want to build your own thing. 
Yes. Or if you want to grow yes. your own thing or you want to promote your own club, organization, if you want to increase the impact that you have on people. And the thing about, like, your personal brand is that you, you can have it in a genuine approach. Because, you know, from Hispanic cultures, we learn to be genuine. It's, like, innate in us. Yeah. So there's no reason to. Like, I found that, like, being more genuine with the personal brand helps helped me better than having than being very transactional. Yeah, 100%. About things. And yeah. I think even as you're building your personal brand, you learn things about yourself mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have otherwise learned. So when you're building it, and maybe you want to post certain specific content mm -hmm. as part of your brand, and then you realize, you know what, maybe this topic, after studying it so much and doing so many posts about it, I kind of got bored of it. So what mm -hmm. else is there out, out there for me? Mm -hmm. And then you start learning, like, okay, I ended up, really being passionate about these topics like i really like posting much more i don't know maybe product management instead of sui like setting up a linkedin account like posting following people that you're interested in mm -hmm. following companies that maybe they have mm -hmm. networking events for like for example there's like product management networking events mm -hmm. and i wouldn't have known that if it wasn't through linkedin mm -hmm. so if somebody else wants to be I don't know, software engineer, mm -hmm. then I would say try and find those communities, mm -hmm. whether it's online or in person, mm -hmm. that we're just software engineers in South Florida meet up. And I would say specifically, I think the better ones are in person because mm -hmm. the the online ones, they they can be from anywhere. They can be from all around the country. And then what you're going to end up happening is you're going to be in that same demographics that I was in, where mm -hmm. you're the only Hispanic out of 100 people in that Mm -hmm. virtual online community but if you're in person in south florida your chances of really connecting with people who understand you mm -hmm. on a much more personal level and cultural level mm -hmm. it, the chances are, are greater thank you so much gabriel for coming on is there any way people can reach you you can always message me on on linkedin i would say mm -hmm. or gabriel gabriel kiddos gabriel kiddos on linkedin and also any and i also have a website that's yeah. almost done yeah it's g-q.live yeah i would definitely say that regardless of where you're listening where you're listening th to this mm -hmm. from just be involved in in shep if you're from fiu get involved in shep fiu mm -hmm. you know we help with technical and professional development mm -hmm. if you're at another college then get involved at their shep i honestly i think we've been able to change a lot of students like life trajectories just mm -hmm. from their involvement in Shep. Like so many people have gotten their dream job offers from their involvement. And that's ultimately why I spent so much time as president because mm -hmm. of that impact. What's the Instagram for Shep? It's Shep, S-H-P-E, F-I-U. F-I-U. So you can find Gabriel on Shep, F-I-U, and also on LinkedIn. Yeah. That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Forward Thinkers Show. 